So we've completed the first stage of the pipe design process, which is to meet the no surcharge criteria. And that was typically done at a one in two year return period storm. The next stage we're going to move on to, section 3.2 in the notes, is the no flood criteria. And this is at a higher return period, typically a one in 30 year event. So the first thing we need to do is to set up that greater storm, that large return period storm. So we go back into the rainfall pollutants, back into the rainfall manager. We've already got the same rainfall, the design rainfall set up, back into the design storms. And I emphasize this course is not talking about the theory of rainfall. Back into FSR, and we're gonna add in, actually we're gonna edit this one. So we go into this, this uh, rain one that we set up earlier. And if we look at the return periods, currently have a two year return period set up. We can now add in a second return period and we're gonna make that the 30 year no flood criteria storm. And that's the one we're gonna use in analysis and we're not gonna to continue to use the, the one in two year so we can switch that off. Storm durations are all the same. I think there's nine storms here. So nine storms, one return period and both summer and winter are gonna be analyzed. So that's gonna be 18 storms in total. Okay, so once you've set that up, re resave the design rainfall again and exit the um, exit the rainfall manager. Okay. Now as I said previously, this is quite a different type of analysis. When we were talking about the no surcharge criteria, we were talking about steady state constant flows. Now we have dynamic flows, flows which change with time. So we run this in quite a different way. The way we do that is under this analysis drop down from the menu here. And the first thing is to go into the analysis criteria. And here we get the opportunity to stipulate which storms we're going to run this dynamic analysis with. So we're going to run with the rain one. And those are the 18 storms that we're going to simulate. We're going to simulate all of these. So like I said, one return period nine different durations and both summer and winter storms are going to be analyzed. We've now got this output interval over here on the right hand side and what we're saying is that we're going to produce a result every minute. Now that's not necessarily the calculation time step. The software will adapt that and quite possibly perform the calculations much more frequently than that. Every few seconds it will produce a result, but it will only present those results for the purposes of graphing and the purposes of the tabular results uh, once every minute, once every 60 seconds. Okay. Next we have this time step. Now this is this does influence how often the results are calculated and there is a def default reduced and short, shortest. I'm going to talk about that more later on but essentially this is a balance between we are trying to get the model to be stable stability is a huge issue in all hydraulic modeling essentially we want the calculations to be conducted correctly and we want to be able to have faith in our results the underlying calculation engine that we use here is swim swmm a very well understood well accepted hydraulic calculation model We've taken that and adapted it for use in info drainage. Um, so it is one of the most stable, robust, versatile available. And we can increase its possibilities of being stable by moving to a shorter time step. I'm not going to do this in this simulation because there is a knock on effect. It does take longer for the simulations to complete. Now this is a fairly simple, it's just one branch, the pipes are all flowing downhill via gravity, there's no storage structures, this is about as simple a system as you can get. So I'm pretty confident this model is going to be stable anyway, so I'm confident to run at the default. But this, the advice is that as soon as you start introducing anything more complicated, uh, any storage structures, any sort of constrictions to the flow, anything like that, you should move to the shortest time step and that gives you the best chance chance of the model being stable and we're going to look in a minute at how you would check that models are stable but for now we're sticking with the default this urban creep parameter here we have the ability 
to specify either a global value or it can be added to each subcatchment. Urban creep is the theory that over times, over time, catchments will get progressively more developed. So people will build conservatories at the back of their houses, they will tarmac over their front gardens to give them somewhere to park the car, that kind of thing. So over time, uh, the pimp of a catchment that we talked about earlier, the percentage impermeable, that will increase. And to represent that fact, we can put in an urban creep um, percentage here if we, if we want to. Um, we've also got this one, junction flood risk margin. Now, when we run this simulation, we want to check whether it floods. That's going to be our, our primary check. But often it's useful to say, OK, although it does, hasn't flooded, has it nearly flooded? And what we mean by nearly flooding or flood risk is has the water got within a certain uh, distance of the cover levels? We can set what that distance is. By default, it's 300 millimetres and we can change that if we want to. This um, form no discharge analysis, I'm not going to run that, that for now. This is not part of the main design process. This is a separate piece of analysis, so it's not relevant for our pipe design process. Okay, so this is how I would normally set up my, um, my simulation criteria. So the next task is to see whether the model will validate. To do that, we go back to the analysis drop down and press on this validate button here. And we can see that there's no, no errors currently. If they were, they would be listed under here. And one of the useful things is that you can then double click on them, click on them, and it should take you, it should open the relevant dialog boxes. So for example, if there was a pipe which didn't have a length specified or a manhole which didn't have a cover level specified, it would take you to that particular manhole or a pipe just by clicking on it there and you could then investigate the information that was missing and one thing is or the main thing to mention here is that this validation purely checks for whether there's any data available it doesn't check to make sure that, that data is sensible so even if you had say an oversized or undersized pipe it wouldn't wouldn't recognize that a pipe that was excessively long or short it wouldn't flag those sort of things up it's just doing a check to say is there available information for everything that we've got here Okay, so once uh, validation is completed, I think this is probably a good time to save the model. So I go to File and Save As. And once again, I'm going to put my model into my Save Work Here directory. Let's call it Exercise 3 this time. Okay, so I think I'm ready to go. The model validates. I've I know that I'm going to run it with 18 storms, so it's simply a case of then pressing go. Runs through. Heard that anecdotally infra drainage simulations take a little bit longer than micro drainage simulations, but not that much longer. I think it's short enough that we can sit and wait until it's finished. Should just take a few more seconds. It's gone through and completed. Now, when uh, when simulations have finished, we first get to a table like this. is automatically created, and it tells us um, what the maximum flows in the pipes are, which is fine. And crucially, it tells us the status of each pipe. Now we can see that some of them are marked as OK, and some of them are marked as surcharged. Now it's okay to be surcharged, um, that's allowed during these high return period storms. The thing that it mustn't do is flood. You'll see that some of, the, um, some of these rows are highlighted in red, some of them aren't. The difference between which ones are and aren't um, highlighted here is that some of the pipes are genuinely under capacity. So there's more flow going down the pipes than it, than it can handle. That will cause backing up. So if it backs up into other pipes, um, those pipes are just recorded without being changing the colour to red and without being put in bold. So in other words, the ones that are red and in bold, those are ones that are under capacity. The ones that are still surcharged may not be under capacity. They may only be surcharged as a result of backing up from downstream. Now at this stage, we are just analysing one of those 18 storms. 
we've got uh, we can see at the bottom here it's the one in 30 year 15 minute summer storm that we're looking at and a very useful button that we've got here is this critical storm what this does is it picks the worst of all 18 storms for each pipe individually so in other words if any of the 18 storms cause flooding in any of the pipes that would be highlighted via this method and you may see there's now a few more um, pipes which are now being reported as a surcharge we can also look to see uh, which was the worst event and we can see for this small one branch catchment it was consistently the 15 minute winter storm that was the worst now we might expect that in larger catchments particularly catchments with storage structures in them, we might expect a variety of different durations to be the worst. So at the top of the system, it might be a 15 minute winter storm. Near the bottom of the system, it might be, for example, a 360 minute winter storm. So it might be a variety of storms across the catchment and it is picking the worst individually for each for each pipe. And it just so happens that in this, as I say, fairly small, simple system, it's always the, uh, always the short storms, the short winter storms that are, that are the worst. Okay. Now at this stage it's perhaps looking at the results in a little more detail. We know that in this example it's consistently the 15 minute winter storm that's the worst so let's focus on that one. So I untick the critical storm and instead down here I'm going to change to the 15 minute winter storm. So you might have to do this for a variety of um, storms but in our case it's, it's uh, simply just, just the one storm that we're going to analyse. Now one of the first things that we can do is look at the graph results for this. So if we go into the graph we've got the connections and we can look at any pipe in those connections. So for example let's just look at pipe bracket 4. Okay. What we can see here is a graph of the green line shows us the rainfall and this is a typical dynamic rainfall profile. Uh, it's symmetrical around a vertical center line, starts from zero, builds up to a maximum and then uh, dissipates again with the same profile. And we can see because it's a 15 minute storm, it uh, obviously only lasts 15 minutes. We can see the flow that produces in the pipe. That's this red line. So that is, you can see the lag behind the peak of the storm and the peak of the um, contribution. So that, but that also builds up to a maximum and then drains down again. Now this little kink here, this uh, may be a genuine effect. It may be as a result of surcharging either in the pipe itself or immediately downstream. We didn't have this kind of smooth up and down. Well, this is something which may indicate um, an instability. What instabilities are is I've, I've talked about them, mentioned them briefly before. This is simply where the calculations fall apart um, and just don't give us sensible answers. And they're often characterized by sort of rapid and violent oscillations in the flow. So if you see something like this where it sort of increases, reaches a peak and then decreases again, that's fine. Even if you get a situation where perhaps you might have negative flows, that might be a genuine effect, water coming up from downstream. But if you get a kind of violent oscillation where the flows are bouncing around, then that indicates that possibly the model is unstable. In this case, it's absolutely not. This, this model is completely stable. It looks fine. I would believe these. Perhaps we would want to investigate this a little bit more, maybe rerun the simulation at a, at a smaller time step and see, see what happens. But it's fine. There's nothing, I'd say, particularly that we need to investigate here. Now, we can also investigate the results in tabular format if you wanted to copy these out to Excel, anything like that. That's entirely possible. We can also look at the manholes. So again, any manhole, we can see what's going on in greater detail. So we've got the flows passing through each manhole. We've got the inflows and outflows, the blue and the red line. You can see that little kink is mirrored in the, in the junctions as well in the pipes. Um, down here, we've got the depth. So we can see that for this particular event, this pipe didn't come close to um, surcharging. Sorry, it does surcharge, but it doesn't come close to flooding. We can see the blue line is well below the red there, which is the cover level. Another useful method of looking at the results is in the profile or long section view via the flow paths. So we can open up this flow path again, show the profile. 
and this time we can see um, here we can run a replay so I can just play through Oops, I'll start it again just going to pause it play it through from the beginning so we can see the water fill up and then drain down if we zoom in on um, just one of the manholes this manhole 4 again that we were analysing earlier we can see that if we just roll back the simulation a little bit we can see it was very rapidly this is a very short storm so things happen very rapidly here but we can see the level to which the water fills up the manhole so these pipes are heavily surcharged but we are nowhere near flooding yet we're not even within the 300 millimeters that would constitute flood risk so we've got the top water level and the pink line represents the maximum um, the maximum head of water that we've got in any any of these pipes at any time so we can do this sort of analysis as we go along so we can be confident now that these pipes have passed the two tests firstly the no surcharge test that's how we sized them and, and created the gradients to start with and then they have passed the second test of running a series of dynamic storms through them and checking that there's no flooding at the high return period and this is a good time to save the model so we're working on exercise three let's save that 